Groucho Marx. Can you bet your life? Presented by DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. If any of them say the sacred word, they'll win an extra 100 bucks. The word tonight is uh, room, R-O-O-M. Welcome back, Doc. George, who's first? Groucho, Mrs. Betty Hawley and Dr. Charles L. Camp are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Betty Hawley and Charles, Dr. Dr. Charles L. Camp, eh? Yes. Betty, spelled B-E-T-T-Y-E. Now, why is that, Betty? Why don't you use the regular orthodox spelling? Well, I have to be different, I guess, Groucho. And well, I there are other ways, Betty. Oh, no, there aren't. <laughs> no, there's only my way. When I was oh, uh, small... very positive about it. <laughs> well, if you hear me out, you'll know. Um. <laughs> but if I keep hearing you out, I won't have any show. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, when I was uh, going... You've seen my show, haven't you? Yes, I have, Groucho. And you've seen me interrupt people? Yes, I have, and I'm prepared. So I'm going on. <laughs> Well, anyhow, when I was going to school, there were, uh, I come from a large family. Was this family. recently? Uh, well, no, it's uh, been a couple of years. So anyhow, we got together, and there wasn't uh, anybody in school that spelled their name with an E, Betty with an E on the end. Did so you investigate the whole school and see if there was anybody with an no, E? No, there was seven in our class, and we took a vote on it. Well, uh, where are you from, Betty? Well, Groucho, I was born in Toledo. In Toledo, in mm -hmm. Spain, huh? Well, it might Spanish, be Spain yeah. to you, but it's uh, here in this country, Ohio. Are you Spanish? Well, not so as you can notice it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know how you would notice a thing like that. <laughs> well, let's say if you're not Spanish, are you married? Yes, I am, Gracho. How'd you meet your husband? Well, I was working as a waitress in this place, and uh, he used what to come place? in as a customer. This is years ago. Oh. And, um... <laughs> that was the name of it years ago? <laughs> <laughs> and he came in as a customer, and I, uh, tried to treat him as a customer, but, uh, finally we got a little friendly. You mean, as a customer, you aren't friendly, is that it? <laughs> well, after he was a customer of mine for a while, we became friendly. Uh, uh, Dr. Camp, what kind of a... Uh, an imposter are you? Uh, a paleontologist, uh, Groucho. You're a what? You're an Italian what? A paleontologist. A paleontologist? Man studies uh, fossil bones and the history of life way back through the rocks. You study fossil bones? Well, I doctor, do. you don't have to look any further, huh? No, I don't have to look any further, Groucho, but you'd be surprised how far you do have to look to go after these things. Well, what brought you to Hollywood, doctor? A dinosaur? Not exactly, Groucho. I came down here to Hollywood to work with... Mr. Irwin Allen, who is producing Who? Irwin Allen. Irwin Allen. Yes. He's producing a picture here that they're going to call the Animal World. Didn't he oh, do the Sea uh, Around Us? Uh, yes, he did. He oh, did the Sea Around Us, picture. and that was a very successful picture. I understand this is very he, good. He wanted me to come down and look over his dinosaurs to see whether they had the right bumps That's on them. That's an old them. gag. They used to say, come up and see my etchings. <laughs> now they say, come over and see my dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> They should. Now, Doc, who's interested in old bones besides me and the junk man? Just, uh, oh, who do you work for? I work for the University of California. Oh, you're a highbrow, huh? Yeah. Is there any particular field of paleontology that has engaged your attention? Yes, Groucho, we've written some of these technical papers. A student of mine and I wrote a paper called The Phylogeny and Functions of the Digital Ligaments of the Horse. You mean you, you play the races? <laughs> Have you got anything good running at Santa Anita? <laughs> well, Betty, let's get back to you. Uh, what kind of work does your husband do, Betty? Chuck and I own a restaurant called Holly's Tough Steaks out in Sherman Oaks in uh, San Fernando Valley. Oh, Holly's Tough Steaks. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the reason for this unusual frankness? Well, I don't think there's anything unusual about it. We're just truthful. And well, you don't think that's unusual? <laughs> I can't say about the rest of the restaurants, but I know we don't lie. You don't? Lie. No, sir. Ours are tough Point. steaks, and, I, and I'm here to tell you they're really tough. <laughs> and if you don't believe it, you come out and try one. Now, do you have frog's legs? Yes, we do. Well, let me see them. 
Isn't it incredible how they laugh at an ancient wheeze like that? <laughs> now tell me one thing, Betty. After your customers have dined on this dubious fare, do they ever agree that the steaks are tough? Well, I can honestly say, and this is one time I am going to tell the truth, that in the 10 years that we've been in business, we have had four legitimate complaints. Hmm. Well, how do they complain? Do they, through a spirit medium? <laughs> well, no. Do they get in touch with Bridie Murphy? <laughs> No, they were tender. They had a right to complain. Have you told us all that? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been quite a shock to them. I guess. <laughs> well, you're an interesting couple, and I'd like to continue this, but the time has arrived for you to play your bet your life. I presume you both know how to play this game, huh? Now, you selected domestic animals and birds as your category. Now, what do you want to start with? What would you like to, Doctor? A I'm a gambler, a hundred. All right, what kind of an animal is a Flemish giant? One answer now, talk it over. You, Rabbit. You probably served that in your restaurant. That's oh, how I you raised them when we were children. You raised them when uh, you were children? Well, you're on your way. You have $200 now. Now, what do you want to try? Do you want to try the 90? What do you say, Doctor? Sure. 90. Good. All right, what breed of domestic farm animals are Cotswolds, Romney Marshes, and South Downs? I think they're sheep. Mm, I think so. Sheep. Sheep is right. You now have $290. Yes, sheep at half the price. Now what are you going to go for? 80. Right, Eight. Doctor? Sure. All right, what breed of domestic animals are Ashes, uh, A-Y-R-S-H-I-R-E-S, Galloways, and Devons? Domestic animals. Cattle. That's right, cattle. You now have $370. And now what? Uh, 70. 70, isn't it? What's the last chance now? to beat the other couples now. All right, what breed of an animal is a hackney? It's a horse. You say it, doctor. <laughs> a horse. It's a horse or a steak at uh, Betty's... <laughs> <laughs> and you wind up with $400. Well, Great. thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. Miss Sigrid Yuta Gassamas is waiting to talk to you now, and her, um, since her partner is a special guest whom you invited, I uh, think it's only fair that you introduce him yourself. So folks, you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Sigrid Juta Gassamas? Gassamas. Oh, I know this fella. This is Harry Ruby, an old friend of mine. We asked him to be on the show tonight. Well, how you doing? Pretty good songwriter, too. Well, we were going to have Wolfgang Mozart on the show, but I Wolfgang just... Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, please. Huh? Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Your boyfriend is Amadeus Mozart, did you <laughs> no. say? No, I didn't. Wolfgang Mozart. You left Amadeus out. Amadeus. Well, I always do because I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, Harry, but there's quite a resemblance between you and Mozart. Yes, I know. And you are, you are Sigrid Jutta... Uh, Casademus Casamas, huh? Casamas. Casamas. Harry, do you think you could write a song called I Will Take You Home Again, Sacred Juta Gazamas? <laughs> yes, I think I could. How would it go? Well, let's see now, Gazamas. When you stand like this beside a charming miss, it offers quite a promise. Wait. It offers quite a promise. Right away I find a thought comes to my mind. Can I take you home? <laughs> He's just another Shelley and Keats and Byron, that's all. <coughs> Sigrid, that's your yes, name? Yes, sir. Sigrid, you yes. aren't the sacred word, are you, uh, Sigrid? Well, it depends. What kind of a name is Gazamas? Uh, Gazamas is a that Greek name. Were you born in Greece? No, I'm born in Meissen in Germany. Meissen? We have Meissen in our attic, but we don't... Have <laughs> Well, are you, are you married? No, sir. Well, would you, would you like to get married? Well, let's see if I find the right match. Yes, I would marry. You want to marry a match? 
<laughs> You're looking for a light Mitch. comedian, huh? Tonight, Mitch. Oh. Well, when do you want to get married? When? Yeah, I mean, well, pretty soon? As quick as possible, if I find the right one, if I told you. Well, could you wait till the show is over? <laughs> well... Harry, I know you're married, of course. Uh, how long has it been? Twenty years. Twenty years, huh? That's a long time. Do you have any particular formula for success in marriage? Yes, I have, Groucho. We have a formula that we follow that ensures happiness throughout marriage. We eat breakfast back to back. <laughs> Sigri, how long have you been in America? Oh, not very long. Well, how long? Well, it's now nine months, mm -hmm. and I didn't speak any English when I came. Do you, I did hope. you have a job before you came to America? Well, I've been studying music in Vienna, and I got my doctor of philosophy in music history in the University of Vienna. Well, what, are you a singer? No, I'm a pianist. I oh. started with William Buckhaus. Did you ever hear of Harry Ruby, the famous composer, while you were in Austria? He looks a lot like Mozart, you know. Well... I don't know the kind of way I remember Mozart. I don't think that there's much between Harry and Ro Mozart, and the music is too different, but I'm sure Harry in his field is the same great, maybe, as Mozart. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're certainly getting no argument out of you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sigrid, maybe we can find a husband for you. Do you have any hobbies besides music? Something that uh, might be interesting to a young man? And my hobby is... judo. <laughs> well, I guess every young fellow is interested in a girl who knows judo. <laughs> you look pretty rugged. How much do you weigh, uh, Sigrid? Well, right now... I mean, strip for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Jim is an abbreviation of gymnasium. <laughs> right now, I have a... Well, let's change it. How much do you, how much do you weigh... Uh, now, f let's forget the whole thing. <laughs> well, you can know in 155, it's all muscles, anyhow. Take a feel of it. <laughs> Giantess. <laughs> you are pretty strong, aren't you, Sigrid? Well, yes, of course she, I am. I yeah. can weigh 100 pounds. I lift it up in one arm and let's go. Well, you mean, you mean if, a, if you were out with a fella, let's say that you were going out with a fella and you were driving around and he put his arm around you and wanted to kiss you, what do you do? Throw him out of the car? <laughs> no, first of all, it depends. You break his back or what? No, it depends who the fellow is and if he gets too nasty. Matter of fact, I broke once of a boyfriend. He sneezed because he just He's, didn't. He sneezed, you say? He sneezed, yes. We had to fight. You broke his knee? Yes, I did. <laughs> 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 no, he wanted to learn too, don't He did. Well, he certainly learned it all. Right. <laughs> he cracked up fast, didn't he? Well, give us a demonstration of your muscles. There might be some eligible young man who was interested in a strong girl. Well. Let's see your muscles. Harry, you better stand back, eh? For that, I, of course, studied classic music, and Beethoven is my favorite composer. Well, mine too, huh? Yes. Da, 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 da. Exactly that. Fifth, that. Let's do that. Da, 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 Well, there you are, boys. If there's any man in the country who's interested in a date with Sigrid, just leave your name and number at the box office. <laughs> and if you're real smart, you'll also leave the name of your neighborhood undertaker. <laughs> well, I can be very soft and nice, too. No, oh, you are. Nice. You're real sweet, Sigrid. Thank you. I'm saying anything about you again. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your career, Harry. It's All been right. one of the most interesting and successful in the music business. And I think our listeners might like to know some of your background. Some for example, what are some of the big songs you're responsible for? Well, Three Little Words, Who's Sorry Now, Nevertheless, Thinking of You, I Want to Be Loved by You. And about 50 others. He's a very shy fellow. Now, Harry, I've known you for many years, and there are some questions I never have asked you. Why did you become a songwriter? Was that the only ambition you ever had? No. When you fail at one thing, you try something else if you have sense. See what I mean? So I failed... No, I actually don't, but you can go on with this, anyhow. Well, anyway, I, I, I failed as a shoplifter. 
<laughs> you were a shoplifter? Actually a shoplifter? Yes, I'm not kidding about that, but it must be judged in the light of the time and my age at the time. You mean everybody was a shoplifter? No, no, no. Uh, two fellows that I went to school with were shoplifters. They said, boy, you haven't got it. You'll never be a good shoplifter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this must have done something to you psychologically, It did yeah? something to me, and I decided the best way out is to write songs. Well, that's a natural sequence from shoplifting the songs. <laughs> Instead of stealing things in Macy's, you stole things from Mozart, Beethoven, <laughs> Chopin, and uh, sure Brahms, huh? Yeah, Brahms Schubert, and huh? different people. And then I went to work with the Gus Edwards Publishing Company demonstrating music in a five and ten cent store. We used to travel in teams, a piano player and a singer. Who do you think my partner was, my first partner? Sigrid? Who do you, no. Walter Winchell. Really? Huh? That's on the level. I thought his first partner was Drew Pearson. <laughs> well, did you with... ever work with anyone uh, else besides Winchell? Yes, uh, I Winchell? worked in the five and tens of Stone Atlantic City in two. He worked in one, I worked in the other, George Gershwin. Gershwin. Mm -hmm. A writer, a songwriter. Never heard of him. So I wouldn't know much, and I predicted he'd never amount to anything. <laughs> I also predicted that Walla Winchell would never amount to anything. You were a pretty shrewd cookie, you know. <laughs> it's a good thing I hadn't met you at that time. Yes. I don't know why you don't get a job as a fortune teller. Huh? <laughs> All you need is a crystal ball in your home. Huh? Well, enough talk about the songwriting business. How about doing some singing? Are, are you game? You mean you want me to play it? I'd like you to play the piano and well, sing. Well, I didn't know I was going to play anything, so I brought my own piano. <laughs> you always, do, you, do you travel by piano? As a rule, when I don't expect to. How are we going to... Hey, maybe. Well, we'd better say Sigrid hey, and show those you? muscles there. Okay. Would you help bring in the piano, eh? Yeah. 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 Get away from there, boys. Sigrid will handle that. <laughs> Need your help. <laughs> All right, Groucho, I'll play a few of my songs. Play uh, some of your own songs, please. Eh? Three little words. Three little letters. go to many parties together and we always sing this song I don't know the words too well but uh, we're gonna sing this together try it anyway right? <clears throat> window cleaning's not a job to rave about it won't get you in the Hall of Fame no one ever looks at you or points you out and the papers never print your name but it's interesting just the same. Every morning we begin on the outside looking in. You bet we see a lot while we miss out the window pane. Out the window we would go if we told the things we know. But we're too wise to scandalize from gossip we refrain. As an occupation, our vocation may be very low and mean. We are not afraid to work, we're paid to keep the windows clean, but... Oh, we know lots of married men who'd be single once again if we told what we see while we massage the window pane. Polishing the glasses for the masses is what you call ideal. Even though it's not a cinch, it's got a lot of sex appeal. Oh. However, <laughs> but we don't want to advertise. Why should we put husbands wise? If they were wise, there'd be no guys massaging windows. Boy, what a husband and wife she'd make, huh? Eh? 
Sigrid, you're a real charmer, and I hope you win a lot of money in the quiz. Thank you. Now let's play your bet your life and find out. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $440. Uh, Sigrid, what do you think of Mr. Fenneman? Uh, oh, I think he's the uh, most charming man. Where is he? Oh, well, uh, George. <laughs> well. Show George how strong you I are. I think he's the most charming Go man I ever met. He wants to show you how strong yes, well. he is. Uh, I'd like to don't dance. Don't run away, George. <laughs> Can we dance? <laughs> The literary quiz. Harry, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You've been on nothing but read books for 40 years, and you take a literary quiz? You're taking advantage of me. I am, huh? All right. Now, remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? You can go from 10 to 100. And we want one answer. 100. And 100. <laughs> and by the way, Groucho, if I do happen to win anything... You're going to give it to me? It'll be donated to the Los Angeles County Heart Association. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. All right, for $100, Edmund Rostam will be remembered for generations because of his classic play. It has also been made into a movie. What is the name of Rostand's great story? R-O-S-T-A-N-D-S. Yes, I know that. I know that. I'm going to, I can't think of it. Classic play, famous movie. What's the name of Rostand's great story? I know, I couldn't think If anybody in the world should know, it's you. Because it's Cyrano. <laughs> it's what? Cyrano. Cyrano. Never Tain, heard of it. Tain sideways. <laughs> <laughs> now, shouldn't he know Cyrano de Bergerac? I should All right, for him. 90, huh? You have $50 now. You lost half the hundred. All right, who was the American writer who gave us such well-known stories as Death Comes uh, for the Archbishop and Sapphira, Sapphira and the Slave Girl? <laughs> Willa Cather. Yes. Willa Cather or Catherine. You now have $140. $80? Hmm? $80. Let's try it. The celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County was one of the first stories to come from the pen of what famous American author? Okay. Uh, Samuel Clemens, otherwise Clark. known as Mark Twain. Lewis and Clark is right. <laughs> You're right, he's no. kidding. That's <laughs> right. Uh, you have $220. 70? 70? A 70, it's up to you. Now. He's more clever than I am. I know nothing about American no literature. 70, 70. All right, one of the classics studied by most school children is The Charge of the Light Brigade. Who wrote it? Oh. Uh. <laughs> What's the name? <laughs> Tennyson. Yes. Tennyson and Lewis and Clark is right. <laughs> You wind up with two hundred ninety dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth Eagle. I should have known. Yes, you tonight. should. Turn around again, Harry. You should have known. <laughs> Come on, Sting. That means that Mrs. Holly and Doctor Camp, with four hundred forty dollars, in just one minute will get the chance at the one thousand dollar question. Now, before we go on with the show, I'd like to say a few words. You know, a lot of people ask me. Why do we have 255 horsepower in the DeSoto? Well, they have it for very specific reasons. They're for reasons of safety, actually. You know, the car, you can go 90 or 100 miles an hour in that car, but that isn't the reason they have that power. They don't want you to drive that fast. But what it's great for is if you're out on the open road, you've got the surge of power there, you just fly ahead, and that's, that's a great safety factor in an automobile, to have that surplus power and to be able to call upon it when you need it and uh, that's the reason that they have these giant 255 horses cowering under that hood here's the winning couple Groucho, mrs holly and dr camp all set for the one thousand dollar question you come right back in here well this is the big stake race here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. You ready? We're all familiar with the famous Texas fort known as the Alamo. 
For $1,000, in what city is this historic Texas shrine located? One answer now. You give it, Doctor. Well, I'll say Houston. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's San Antonio. Oh. I'm sorry. That means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they want the uh, complete distance. They want distance. the full limit? 440, 440? Yeah. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations, Thank and much. thanks to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Sorry you didn't win the big one. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. This is George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. See that children play only in approved play areas, never in the street or near moving traffic. Hey,